tonight has really honestly shocked the nation. We have further exposed the corruption within our own feckless, cowardly Republican Party. And that is exactly the reason why, right, I decided to run against the rhino Republican, Daniel Webster. Do nothing, Daniel Webster. Yeah. That was far-right extremist and grifter Laura Loomer on Tuesday night after her election loss to incumbent Republican Daniel Webster. Now, as you saw there, she uh, said very clearly, She's not conceding. She's claiming that there was fraud. And now since Tuesday, things have escalated drastically because now she is simply unilaterally declaring herself the congresswoman of Florida's 11th congressional district. So we'll talk about that and speculate how that's going to work out, even though she lost and has presented no evidence of fraud. But regardless, she did come pretty close and that should horrify everyone. So she got 44.2% of the vote and that really is no small feat for someone this extreme. And I just want you all to let that sink in for a moment. Laura Loomer almost won a GOP primary against an incumbent Republican. That is scary. And believe it or not, even though this sounds like it's a stretch, she's more extreme than Marjorie Taylor Greene, full stop. There's a lot of overlap there, to be clear, but she absolutely is more explicit in her racist rhetoric. Now, if you don't know who Laura Loomer is, let me give you a little bit of background. This is from Mother Jones. Loomer hasn't served in office before. Instead, she is famous for being a conservative activist and being cartoonishly bigoted. She has a years-long history of raw, unfiltered Islamophobia that possibly reached its zenith when she said after 50 people were killed in a New Zealand mosque that, quote, nobody cares about the Christ Church shooting. I especially don't. I care about my social media accounts and the fact that Americans are being silenced. Loomer was bemoaning those kicked off websites sites like Twitter for being racist. She did not change her rhetoric to make herself more palatable for Congress during the campaign. Loomer recently shared an article that lamented the accelerating of the erasing of America's white history. She's also kept up a public dialogue with Nick Fuentes, a white nationalist who endorsed her. In March, Loomer went on white nationalist Jared Taylor's podcast. Right Wing Watch has documented her saying things like, I'm a really big supporter of the Christian nationalist movement, and I'm going to fight for Christians. I'm going to fight for white people. I'm going to fight for nationalist movements. So we're not talking about dog whistles here. She's saying it loudly. And that is disturbing that she got 44% of the vote in Florida's 11th congressional district. Now, my first introduction to her was when she chained herself or handcuffed herself rather to the door of Twitter's headquarters in New York after she was banned and she was there for hours and she was trending. So, I mean, mission accomplished. And I mean, like, look, I have a Twitter account. I feel like I would be sad if I didn't have my Twitter account. But I mean, go outside, touch grass, Jesus Christ. Um, but <laughs> now she has decided that she wants to be a congresswoman. So she ran before and lost. This time she came closer, still lost. But now she's not going down silently. So she is claiming it was stolen from her. And on Tuesday night, to go back to her speech, she worked herself to tears, literally convincing herself that this election was illegally stolen from her. Watch. We are losing our country because of big tech election interference. And I am pleading with the Republican Party to please start taking this issue seriously. Please, because the American people deserve representation. And that's, a, that's why I ran for Congress in 2020. It's why I ran for Congress in 2022. And it's why I'm going to keep fighting for all of you. I'm never going to. I mean, I don't know if she believes what she's saying. I don't know if she's just saying this to work up the crowd. I don't know if maybe she didn't believe it, but con convinced herself. I don't know what to make of this. But either way, even though this is a little bit humorous, to be honest, this is absolutely devastating to democracy. This is what Republicans going forward are going to do thanks to Donald Trump. It started with him and then Carrie Lake, gubernatorial candidate in Arizona before that election was even called. She, you know, announced that she had won, claimed that there was fraud. She ended up winning, still said that there was fraud and perhaps maybe she would have won by a bigger margin. You now see other candidates like Laura Loomer claiming fraud. This is just going to be what they do when they lose elections, even when it's against fellow Republicans. And that is damaging to democracy. But I can't be too mad at Laura Loomer here because she's doing some damage to the Republican incumbent. And now she is explicitly telling her supporters, do not 
vote for him. In fact, boycott this election if you live in the 11th congressional district of Florida and you're a Republican. So she wrote this, I do not concede and I encourage all of my supporters and all of my voters to not support Daniel Webster and the corrupt establishment RNC and big tech voter fraud machine that is propping his feeble body up and depriving my constituents of the representation they deserve and need. I am calling for Daniel Webster to resign Jesus uh, because everyone knows he is beyond unfit to serve. He didn't campaign. He refused to debate me. And it's because his health is worse than Joe Biden's. Now, I do think that it is wrong for incumbents to never debate their primary opponents, but it's not because his health is deteriorating, presumably. Like I've seen plenty of uh, primaries where Democratic incumbents will debate their progressive challengers. This is just the thing that incumbents do. I do think that they should be forced to debate their opponents because I believe in democracy, even lunatics like Laura Loomer. So, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't blame her for being upset about that. But to claim that there was fraud and he didn't want to debate you because he's dying, (laughs) presumably, I mean, come on. But that's not even the best part because in a lengthy Telegram post, She just straight up declared herself the Congresswoman of Florida's 11th Congressional District. So she wrote, The congressional seat in Florida's 11th District is mine for the taking, and I will be the Congresswoman from Florida's 11th District. I actually am the Congresswoman in Florida's 11th District, and everyone knows it, sure. Uh, I'm not going anywhere except Washington, D.C. Florida's 11th District is my home, and I'm going to keep fighting for the people here who have zero representation thanks to the feckless GOP establishment and voter fraud. Daniel Webster is illegitimate, and my team and I will work to drive him into to the ground every step of the way until he collapses in disgrace or poor health, Jesus Christ, and resigns like he should have many years ago. Now, skipping ahead a couple of paragraphs here, his health is drastically failing. He is demented, looks ill. <laughs> he can barely speak. He wears a life alert. And I... <laughs> And I am willing to bet he doesn't survive before his current term is over or he pulls an early retirement and the good old boys try to handpick another corrupt successor. We will not allow them to get away with that. They think I'm leaving. And guess what? I'm not. Now we're going to skip ahead a little bit. It gets even darker, believe it or not. I will continue to push Daniel Webster to his absolute physical limits till he resigns in disgrace since the GOP establishment wants to prop up zombies with their voter fraud and big tech election interference machine. Now, she also says here she's working on a federal racketeering case against Twitter and Facebook. Good luck with that. And she has an army behind her. Now, my question is, why stop at Congresswoman? Like, if you're just going to pretend like you won and you can unilaterally declare yourself congresswoman why not declare yourself president why not declare yourself the fucking god emperor of the planet i just don't get what you stop there aim higher i and look i want to see what happens laura okay let's see if you actually believe this show up claim your desk in congress and uh see what happens when daniel webster shows up Just say, no, I'm the congresswoman. Bye. Security, escort him out. See who they're going to take out of handcuffs. See what they're going to do when you you ask security. Okay, pick one. Who's the real one? Me or Daniel Webster? See what they're going to do. I I just, I don't know what, what to say about these people. They're so fucking delusional. So delusional. And to be clear, I don't necessarily know if she believes the lies that she's saying. It's really a distinction without a difference because the effect is still the same. And regardless if she believes it or not, her supporters certainly believe it. So some of her supporters have been responding to these fraud allegations um, against Daniel Webster on Twitter, and they are ripping him for fraud. So let me just give you one example here that stood out to me. So in response to Daniel Webster predictably attacking Biden's student loan forgiveness while saying nothing, of course, about tax cuts for the rich or PPP loans that his Republican colleagues took but were uh, forgiven. So one of Loomer's supporters vocalized her frustration saying, rigged, rigged, rigged. I absolutely don't want to live in this nation where my idol, Laura Loomer, is getting robbed. This is absolutely the final straw. My kids are in danger and I won't live in this nation another day. I'm moving to Alaska and finally leaving the USA. Now, look, I have no idea what the circumstances are. If your kids are actually in danger, then I, that's horrible. And I hope that, you know, they're safe. Um, that being said, I don't want to be that guy, but Alaska is actually a part of the United States. Now, it's so comically idiotic that 
I actually don't know if this is satirical. Like, that's where we're at, where this is indistinguishable from satire. So that person could be trolling. I mean, saying my idol, Laura Loomer, it feels like maybe this is a troll, but at the same time, would anyone doubt it if this were indeed a real Laura Loomer supporter? At this point, I have no idea. Like, I genuinely don't know. But it's so preposterous that I have to at least question, is this satirical? Is this person just being ironic? Because this is what we're dealing with here. It's not a stretch to think that her supporters are believing this, considering... Donald Trump got so many people right up that they stormed the fucking Capitol. So how is this going to end? Is she going to encourage her supporters to storm Daniel Webster's office? Is she going to just, again, like handcuff herself to his chair? How is this going to end? Like you're declaring yourself the congresswoman of the 11th district of Florida. So how's that going to work out? I I just don't know. But either way, I damn well, we'll be watching this shit show because uh, I I like that she's trying to tank Daniel Webster's chances. I think that that's great. Don't love that she's, you know, harming democracy overall, but if she's trying to convince her supporters to boycott this election and help this Republican lose, okay, let them fight. Up yours. Up yours. Up yours. Sons of bitches. 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 Woke moralist. Woke moralist. Woke moralist. I dreamed I saw my maternal grandmother. She was stroking herself absentmindedly. I let her have her way. Her genital region was exposed. I let her have her way.